Well, President Obama uh, hasn't done much in terms of press since since no. uh, the, the setback, the shellacking on Tuesday, <laughs> but he did do an interview with CBS that's airing on Sunday on, at 60 Minutes. Take a look at some of what he had to say. I think that uh, over the course of two years, we were so busy and so focused on getting a bunch of stuff done uh, that we stopped paying attention to uh, the fact that uh, you know, leadership isn't just legislation, uh, that it's a matter of persuading people uh, and giving them confidence and bringing them together uh, and setting a tone uh, and making an argument uh, that uh, people can understand. And uh, I think that uh, we haven't always been successful at that, and I take personal responsibility for that. And we're joined now by Susan Davis, Congressional Correspondent for National Journal. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So President Obama does this interview, which will air while he's already in India, but I think that line is so interesting. Leadership isn't legislation. Mm -hmm. And looking ahead at what we expect the White House and the Democrats in the Senate to try and do with that Republican majority in the House, what are we looking at now for the next few years? How does he get the leadership back? I think that's a really interesting question. And to me, one of the relationships that I think is going to become one that we're all going to start watching really closely is this relationship between Barack Obama and John Boehner, yeah. which are two people that had a, a non-existent relationship mm -hmm. prior to Tuesday. And you know, one of the first calls Barack Obama made was to John Boehner to congratulate him on his victory. It's interesting because if you look at the temperament of these two people, I mean, B Obama and John Boehner are very even-tempered people. They're not known as in their rhetoric and their tone as being hyper-partisans. They ostensibly say they want to reach across the aisle, work with the other side. But you think they might be able to do this. The question is whether their parties are going to let, let them. That Democrats in the House that are left are much more liberal than the caucus that was there right. before. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a wave of Republicans coming in who feel like they really need to send a message of what they wanted to do. I want to talk about Pelosi in a second because I think that's so mm -hmm. interesting that she may hang on. But regarding Boehner, uh, you showed the interview mm -hmm. yesterday and what, what he has said since then. Clearly they know they need to give something yeah. to the Tea Party element I inside their party. But it may not be Michelle Bachman. It may be something else. It could be something. I mean... It, I think a lot of it could be in actions. Ba ba John Boehner wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal today, and he said, we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to abolish earmarks. Yeah. Uh, earmarks, in a lot of ways, it's almost a symbolic thing. Right. It's a rounding error in the budget. It's not really going to change the, the economic problems we face. But I think that's an immediate early step that they can take that I think, one, would keep both their conference happy and send a message to a lot of these Tea, Poder, tea Party voters, we get it, and we're doing something. Mm -hmm. Turning to Pelosi. Mm -hmm. So lots of buzz now about what she's going to do next. What are you hearing? What are you expecting? I think if Nancy Pelosi wants to stay and be minority leader, I think she can do that. Well, she I, has the votes almost. Yes, almost I don't so think that there's yes. a, the question is, and, and I think it's really curious, why do you want right. to stay? Yeah. What is, and if she, maybe she believes as the electorate has shown that it's very volatile, that majorities are won and lost, maybe she thinks they can get it back in 2012. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's learned lessons. But you know, she's 70 years old. She's got eight grandkids. She, she already made history. I don't, I can even make the case for her staying, I can make the case for her leaving, but I think if she wants to stay, she's going to be here. And there would be a lot of unhappy Democrats, yes. though, if she does that. Even right. if she's got a majority, there's more, there's a higher percentage of liberals inside the caucus, they're still going to be behind her, but there'd be a lot of people upset. And even liberal Democrats will say, we love Nancy, she was great to us, she was, we respect her and we like her legacy, and we just need to move on. Yeah. We need a new face. Because That's so much of this was about her, yes. too, in right. so many races. I mean, she's well, one of the most unpopular political figures in America. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the face that you want on top of a very chasing party Not right to now. mention the fact that all of those gains, everything they did in those six and 08, everything that they that they clawed for, they lost it all mm -hmm. in one night and Nancy Pelosi was the Speaker of the House when it it's all happened. It's almost a complete yeah. reversion to the cap, to the political map that existed right before the 2006 election. Oh, Tom DeLay is laughing somewhere. <laughs> Susan Davis from National Journal, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to tune in this week on Sunday. Some great headliners. Rand Paul, the Senator-elect from Kentucky, in studio with Christiane Amanpour. Add to that Mike Pence and, uh, and David Stockman, the former uh, budget director in Republican years. We're going to have a lot to talk about on this week. Lots of politics to go over. And we, we're one, one step closer to actually the drink of choice, right, Karen? <laughs>